Ted, I want to I want to put you. I believe you are the only person at the bulwark who has not been forced to stand out in the town square and confess whatever your views are on the student loan debt forgiveness mm. and just to get beaten up from both sides because we do seem to have, I think, a pretty pretty interesting split. More so at the the member level, where I think people are. It's like 40% in favor, 30% opposed, and 20% don't really know. Uh, within that only adds the up board, to 90. staff, what? That only added up to 90, though. To, well, 10, you know, 10%. my college loan should have been forgiven then because <laughs> John, the Johns Hopkins University didn't do a very good job. Um, and, uh, and what I think institutionally, I am maybe the closest to, yeah, it's fine. You know, like it's not it's not the end of the world. It's probably not smart politics. It's probably suboptimal policy, but whatever. I'm not going to get worked up over it. Whereas I think more people within the Bulwark staff are opposed in real ways. Tim, would you say this is this is a fair? Yeah, I think that's right. I and mean, I think I'm probably the second. Well, we'll see what Ted's position is, but I think I'm the second most sympathetic in the town square, and I'm opposed. So I, I think mm. that lets you so, know. So Ted, just, where are I'm you? Sympathetically buddy? opposed to it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, you know, every time when I read people's opinions on this or hear folks talk, there's a it seems there everyone's answering a little bit of different question. Like, is it good policy? That's one set of debate. You know, one part of the debate is it good politics. That's the other thing. And then is it fair? Is it just? Um, and I, I feel differently depending on which one of those factors I'm considering. Um, generally speaking, I think I'm where you are, JV. I'm like, eh, it's fine, you know, whatever. It's it's fine. Um, if you if you are seriously in debt, this is not going to help you too much. Um, if you've got that little debt, you know, you probably could have knocked it out in some time. And you know, 10k, you know, you'll you'll probably be fine. It's it's only for those making less than 125, I guess it is. And even you get a little bit more, you get 20k if you if you had Pell grants. That's okay, fine. This is um, this is not going to help people buy homes. You know, maybe it will help people, you know, with groceries or maybe a week of childcare or something like that. But this is not going to be transformational. And that's why I don't get too worked. I'm not too worked up about it. Uh, uh, if if this were transformational, if this was forgiving all federal student loan debt, um, then I would love to engage in that conversation. With, you know, those who are for and those who are against. With this sort would of you be for you know, that tinkering would on you, the margins. Would you, have been, would you yeah, be for should, that? Do you think it should have been bigger? Um, Go bigger. So, well, so if if it were bigger, um, I, I would need more information than just. We want to we want to, um, you know, right or wrong or the, the market has treated people unfairly and we want to, like, make it right. Um, I, I would like if, if you if you wipe out debt and then college is still 80 grand next year, you know, in 10 years, 20 years, we've got to feel problem. that right now, don't you? Whenever, you know, <laughs> I, I am for thinking about ways of like uh, of, of when we move a trillion dollars around, like let's, if we're going to do something, then let's, let's do the thing and be very serious about the kind of country we're creating. Um, this sort of, you know, policy signaling is, um, you know, okay, whatever, it, it's fine. Maybe you get some votes, maybe you don't, I, I don't know, but I don't think anyone's life is transformed by this. And, um, and, and for that reason, I just can't get my, do, I can't get in a dance. Do our two, against. All right, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be the anti uh, just really quick. One more time, one more pushback on one element of this. Do our I think our two most fervent, maybe I guess maybe Sarah would disagree with this, but democracy defenders that democracy is in peril, that our democracy might be on its last legs. Advocates for protecting that within the bulwark. Do neither of you have any concerns about the current president just kind of acting like a lawless king and putting his finger up in the air and saying, eh, "I don't know, 125. That sounds good. 20k. I can just do this on my own. I'm going to pretend like we're in a I fake emergency." That doesn't that doesn't worry either of you. Totally, totally does. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's my my largest concern of this is the process concern. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like, what are you going to do? Like, it's, it's the process is the process. Yeah. Tell them not to yeah, do and, that. And, say we can't say we shouldn't do that. Is what <laughs> you're going to do? I don't know. You're a commentator. Well, Commentate about your concerns about that. I think it would be something you could do. This is why I think it should have been bigger. You know, or 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 like the the swing should have been bigger to force this conversation about executive power, about you know the state of the economy, about the role of carrying debt, even if it's considered good debt. In a, in a debt-laden society, in the role of higher ed, 
none of that's happening as a result of this. This is this is the president using executive power to, to play around in the administration of a program um, that Congress is not going to do anything to stop. Uh, that may or may not translate into votes, that kind of half-heartedly, lukewarmly delivers on a campaign promise. It's just so wishy-washy that, um, you know, this is like, this is the state of democracy today. You know, no bold swings, no bold swipes, um, just just sort of piddling. On the other hand, though, Ted, another way of saying this is wishy-washy is saying that Biden has split the baby and has gone in a middle course that will help some people in very real ways, maybe not as many people as he could have, but will help people in some real, very real ways and will avoid pissing off a bunch of people because it is smaller. Now he's going to piss off a bunch of people, but I think, to be honest, I suspect most of those people already hated Biden anyway. If you if you look at this and you think, well, this is socialism in America, then you probably already thought socialism was in America. And maybe this is like, just the, the the Biden thing, right? This is, you know, sort of in the middle. You know, he basically campaigned on this. He didn't like going bigger. He thought it was important to do something. And so just kind of like there. I get I get I could see um the, the median student loan debt is um, you know, I don't know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand ish. Um and so, you know, you don't meet that number, you go about halfway to it, maybe a little bit more for those that are in, living in poverty, or at least were during t- the time when they applied for, to, to went to college. And so, you know, it's it's like, it's hard to get upset about. It. And that's why the, the attacks on it have all been about the fairness of it, about, about those who were, who paid their tuition, who didn't take on more debt than they can handle. Now it's, it's not fair that they've been, um, they had to do that while others are, are being relieved. But again, this isn't, it wasn't a bold swing. He didn't wipe out debt for not even the median voter. He sort of cut it in half. Um, so it, this is Biden. This is like meet in the middle, pragmatism, little little bit of this, little bit of that. And uh, it's what we voted for. And I, I think we're, we're getting it. So Tim, maybe this is the answer to your question, like why I'm not more worked up over it. And maybe the reason I'm not more worked up over the process stuff is that the big objection to it has been the fairness objection. And I have no patience and no time for that. I look at the fairness thing and I just think to myself, life is unfair. The federal (laughs) government is about to spend billions of dollars to bring better broadband to Cletus Von Ivermectin and his various cousins, sons, wives, and children. And they're spending my money. I live in a suburban metropolis in a large metro area. I don't need to have extra rural broadband in Arkansas and West Virginia. Those people chose to live there. They could live anywhere. Why are you spending my do- I pay for it's my broadband there. infrastructure. Your mortgage, what's your mortgage? You're, this stuff's and already baked into your mortgage. You're in a like, high-tax state. Everything is You're living, everything you're living is in New Jersey. You have this expensive mortgage. You have a high-tax state. And now you got Cletus out there in, in the Ozarks. Who's you know what are we what what is it forty seven million of this uh, I pulled just pulled this up was uh, this was the administration to their credit this is an administration spokeswoman friend of mine Lily Adams who's bragging about this forty seven point five million of the infrastructure bill is going to go to serve fifty five hundred homes in the Arkansas rural Arkansas fifty five hundred homes fifty five hundred homes like, forty seven million dollars yeah fifty five hundred homes figures per home just to get just to get some Comcast in there so they can get up and pull up Steve Bannon's podcast I, you know it's not great it's not great it's the, not how no, I would like is, to be spending my is, none of us dollars. are running around complaining about it no. because this is again no this ads. is life. There are no ads. This you don't is see, life. You don't see any ads in the suburbs of Atlanta featuring a lady outside, you know, on her on her uh, spin bike at in Buckhead, you know, going to pick up a a little artisanal uh, artisanal treat afterwards, right? You know, getting some uh, what maybe a turmeric juice. You know, you don't see her walking around with her turmeric juice, saying, you know, avocado I work toast. all day. I work all day at the law firm. Okay, I paid off my college debts. And here we are using my hard-earned tax dollars that I'd like to be spending on a double-sized turmeric latte, and it's going to Cletus in the Ozarks, <laughs> who needs fucking the internet to do to do God knows what, watch porn. Okay, I don't, on that's not fair. And watch porn. All right, I, yeah, but you don't yeah. see those ads running in suburban Atlanta because you know the the Democratic college-educated base is not motivated completely by grievance. Yeah, right. 
Anyway, so this is this then is my answer to you, Tim, as to why I'm not more worked up about the process stuff. And it's because most of the, the honestly, against, the people who are your the, former Republican friends, just the interpersonal people who resentment are, is why you don't care. No, but here's the funny thing. The people who are most worked up about about the process stuff are the center left types. Right. It's it's the, the it is honestly like the bulwark center left types like you, Tim, Me. who are like, hey, norms, hey, norms. processes. Um, I have another I have another little uh, riff on this. I just like to get your guys take on it because I, I th- think I was thinking in the shower this morning. This might be a piece, but it might not be a piece. It might just be a quick riff. But I, I do also find it's interesting in the Republicans messaging on this that it's like what they're trying to do now because it, it's all the same people that used to be at running the party when they wanted Ryanomics, right? So we're right. cloaking, we're cloaking Austerity. Ryanomics now in class war. It's really what these ad, you know, so you see this ad from it's McCarthy's super super pack. It used it literally used to be Paul Ryan's super pack like four years ago, and they had that ad was like the guy that's a mechanic and a woman that's a waitress or whatever. She's like, I'm so happy my tax dollars are being used to pay off lesbian dance studies you know person and you know the whatever with their basket weaving degree and the cat lady right okay so that so they're they're now rather than arguing they don't even argue on the merits right like none of these ads are like this is wasteful the national debt right like you know we should be lowering the broadening the base and lowering the rates like not you know instead of doing like none of those arguments are even being you see a few people like on like nerdy like websites but like the 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 big messaging from the politicians is now this class war right which is which is why i think some of the targeting on the biden thing made this easy job easier for them and i wish they would have done that differently but 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 it's the so i'm also very unsympathetic to this right like this idea that we're gonna do a class war where we pretend that we're the guy who's fighting for the working stiff you know by making them resentful against the you know whatever people with the graduate degrees uh, and and we're going to run this campaign based on that, and say it's a bad idea based on that. Not we're not running this campaign b- based on on the merits, you know. And so they're not doing either of the two things. They're not running as authentic Ryanomics people because they know that's unpopular, and they're not running as authentic kind of populist Republicans who are like, we loved the infrastructure bill, great job, Joe Biden. Like that was good because it's helping working stiffs, but this is bad because it's you know helping his elite base. Like I, if somebody said that, I you know I'd say props to you. Okay, at least you're making an argument. That's not what this is. It's just resentment. It's just Ryanomics with resentment politics on top of it. 